guys welcome to a new video hope you're all having a great day um, in this video you might notice that I'm using some of James Burke and Courtney Diaz's collage sheets and they are super fun totally recommend getting them um, you can get Courtney's on her patreon and you can get James's on his teachable through his collage club and it's just they both have really great deals for getting tons of collage sheets and uh, you can use them over and over again and they're just tons of fun so anyway um, uh, I also used my friend um, Rosie from pin and inko on Instagram um, her illustration there of me Amanda April Liz and Teal and um, we're like a friends with pens pen pal group and so Rosie illustrated all of us I'm in the bottom left hand corner and so I just printed that out and put it in my journal and it's just really a sweet illustration and it was a really nice surprise to see because uh, it's nice to know someone's thinking of you and you know when you have a friend illustrate you that's just the coolest thing ever so yeah so anyway, um, I laid down one of my faux vintage um, ephemeras, the one that says Sydney on it, and I put the little nine into the little frame on the ephemera and I just thought it fit so perfectly. And um, then I went in with some background color. Uh, I, at, at first I kind of regretted putting the orange in because it was quite bold against the teal but it ended up working out in the end. And if you mix those two colors, they kind of create mud, so you have to be careful. So um, yeah, I, but I love how vibrant the colors are, and that's something that I really love is color, and I'm definitely trying to bring more of that into my journaling. And to be honest, my journaling is still in its experimental phase. I guess it'll always be in an experimental phase, but it's kind of still in me trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing and what journaling is and all that. So um, yeah. And isn't that illustration by James just so beautiful? I love it so much. And so that was the first one I decided to use out of his illustrations. <laughs> and um, I had some trouble deciding where to place her. Um, I thought she would look really cute in that corner, which I ended up doing. But I also thought about like cutting her and putting her right in the middle of the journal because um, I thought she would make the transition between the two pages work a bit better. But I ended up not doing that because I thought if I cut up the image, would it look weird with the uh, middle of the binding of the book? Like, and I didn't really want to risk that. And so, yeah. So I ended up drawing some flowers behind her and placing her on top. Um, to give her kind of like a little fairy garden that she was on and I really love how the flowers turned out I totally just winged it and remembered some flower illustrations that I've seen like on Instagram and stuff and kind of just played off my memory of what those looked like and made up my own flowers <laughs> and I added some lines to the top and bottom of each petal because I think that makes them look a little bit more real and like there's creases in the petal and yeah so like I said I really love how it turned out and I definitely have to do more of these floral drawings in the future because they're just so much fun quick and easy and they add so much to a page so that's me trying to figure out where to place the fairy like I had no idea and then I was like yeah I'm gonna keep her up top there so that's what I ended up doing and unfortunately part of her was off the page so I had to trim it off but um, I think it, the placement ended up looking really good. And let's see, what did I do next? Um, hmm. Oh, I added some Copper Candles watercolors by Rachel, designs by Rachel Beth. Um, you can see it shimmering on the left-hand side and it is super, super pretty. And I try to add that in whenever I can because it just adds such a nice touch of glitz and glam to a page or an illustration or a painting and I just love it so much so you'll definitely see a lot of that in my work and um, the washi tape I just put down was I believe called Mark's Maced or Mast tape and it's really great for 
um, just putting like where you want to cover something up and I usually cover up the Japanese quote at the bottom because I can't read it so it doesn't really help me by being there and so yeah I just covered it up with the date and I'm trying to add in these Japanese calendar day pages to every page but sometimes they don't really work with the layout but I am trying to use it up because when I bought it um, I think I'm pretty sure I was thinking about using a different journal that didn't have dates already on it and um, I ended up getting a Hobonichi kind of spur of the moment as I mentioned in my previous videos and so I had all these dates for the whole year and I was like well I gotta find a way to use them otherwise it's just a waste right because they have 2021 written on them so yeah I just used some of my zodiac washi tape um, to tape that date in and what, what was really funny about that washi tape was um, I got it on Amazon but it was listed under kids washi tape and I was like this is like so cool why would they just say it's kids washi tape I don't know but <laughs> anyway um, so here I am taping in the my friend's illustration and um, I decided to tape it in as a side tip in I was originally gonna just glue it or tape it down but I changed my mind and now I'm flipping through all of my sticker sheets and I have quite the collection now and some are from Sticky Club and some are from various independent artists and of course we have Gudetama because what is a page without Gudetama? <laughs> He's just so cute and oh those are some of my own stickers I just put the fox down and then I tried to move it because I was like, oh, I want to put a mushroom illustration there to kind of mimic the mushroom sticker that I had on the left hand side. So I just ended up um, putting the mushroom uh, illustration on top. And yeah, so um, drawing these kinds of illustrations um, when you're not doing them first in pencil is kind of like a mind game because you have to figure out where the pieces of foliage or mushrooms are going to overlap each other and not make a mistake in the drawing and so that was kind of a challenge but I think it worked out pretty good and then I added some warm tones on the right hand side with um, my Tombow marker and at first I was like huh I don't know if the cool tones of the purple will match this warm tone but I really think it worked out great and so I'm happy that I did it. And so now I'm just searching for what to put on the left hand side and I had no ideas so I just started doodling stars. <laughs> That's like my go-to. I always doodle stars when I'm like trying to think of what to, new to do next and to fill up gaps and stuff. Stars are great. So then, I, oh yeah, um, my mom made these really, really gross plant-based ginger molasses cookies. She said that they were great, but she ended up putting like peanut butter and banana on it. And I think that's cause they were not good. <laughs> so um, I totally love that she's experimenting in the kitchen cause sometimes she comes up with really, really great stuff. But um, those were not a winner for me. They, they definitely tasted, they tasted kind of like a bran cookie, which might sound good to some of you, but I'm not really a fan of like brand cereal or anything, so they were not a winner for me, but um, yeah. But oh, last night she made these um, cheese spinach enchiladas and they were so good. So yeah, <laughs> sometimes there's good things, sometimes not. So um, I wrote out all of my journaling for both pages and I just added a little border around that text and I like the way it separates it from the um, images on the page and then um, I think that's my Say Cheese 2 scrapbook paper and it's a uh, Disneyland inspired scrapbook paper collection and I got it several years ago because um, I don't know if you know but I'm like totally obsessed with Disneyland and the history behind it and the attractions and I love watching YouTubers who go and explore the parks and talk about everything to do with it. And so um, I was hoping to go back to Disneyland uh, a few years, like within the last few years, but financially and with COVID, it just hasn't really worked out. 
And so um, I have all this like Disney ephemera and scrapbook paper and I haven't used it yet. So I just put it in my um, pile of stuff to be used because I thought, why not? Disneyland can be enjoyed even if you're not there. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just added it in. And some potentially good news is that Disneyland will be opening, I believe, at the end of April. So that's really exciting. <clears throat> But um, because California is in the red, I think that they're only opening it to a small crowd. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this journal with me and all of my rambling chit chat. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.